Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and this is going to be week two of Scott Tries. Now, this is a series in which I try various web services, of which I've tried a few already. I tried Begin, I tried Take Shape, Glitch, and Hasura. And I had a lot of fun trying these. This one is going to be maybe a little bit different. It's in the realm of web services in a lot of ways. And it's a service that I just very recently found out about. And this one shot up to the top of my list. Uh, why? Well, because I didn't want to have to wait to try to use it. I wanted to use it right now, uh, specifically because it just looked cool. Now, okay, first off, one thing you'll notice is this is whimsical.com. If you haven't heard of this, the coolest thing about Whimsical, in my mind, is that you can tell what they do within two seconds of landing on this page. There is no confusion about what they do. They do flowcharts, wireframes, sticky notes, and mind maps. And if you scroll down, you can see some teams use it and some really cool people use it. Jesse says it's dope, which I love. And Pablo Stanley, if you don't know Pablo Stanley, he does awesome illustration work, uh, awesome design work. He says, this is the one. Uh, so if Pablo says it's cool, then I am on board to check it out. Now, that's how short this page is. Uh, heck yeah. Here's the four things we do. No fluff. Here's the four things we do. Here's some really cool people saying it's awesome. That's it. One thing I'm not exactly psyched about is that there's no pricing on this page. If you scroll, scroll, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see itty bitty teeny tiny pricing here. Now this shows us that they, uh, they have a, a monthly fee. Now for a service like this, I don't know if I personally am going to be paying a monthly fee for this because uh, this is the kind of software that I would open up every once in a while as a solo entrepreneur, you know, business owner, right? I'm going to open this every once in a while to do a flow chart or chart, whatever, but I'm not going to be using this every day and software that I pay monthly for. Typically I'm going to be using it every day. So I understand the irony of me saying that because I have my own monthly subscription service with level up tutorials, but nonetheless, I, I wouldn't necessarily think to use this 24 seven. That said, some people are going to, right? If you're on a team, you're doing this kind of stuff often, maybe you're gonna be spending that time. Uh, we do get four free boards for free. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna sign in with my Google and let's get going. I'm gonna select this one. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to create a flow chart here because this is a flow chart app. We give it a title, SUP. Now I'm noticing, um, I don't know if you noticed in the previous screen. Ooh, okay, that, okay, okay. I don't know if you noticed in this previous screen, but this to me feels very Figma-esque. Uh, we have our projects, folders, team stuff over here. Uh, we have all of our boards and examples over here, our user stuff up here, and a question mark down here. Now. You're, you might be hearing me say this and mean like, but Scott, every single site in the whole world has this. Yeah, I agree. Um, we go to, sorry, we go to Figma, conveniently loading up the thumbnail of my next series. No, not intentional. Uh, you can see that we do have our team and folder stuff over here, the grid of our stuff, and then this question mark with all our help resources. Not exactly like shocking or, or something like that, but it does seem inspired. Uh, by, and who knows, maybe it is or isn't, but it looks nice. Just like this looks really nice. Their design is very, very nice. Design on point, colors on point. Let's head back to our sub. Let's go ahead and try to create something here. You can see uh nice little, okay, you can change what kind of document it is. Okay, so we have a grid. Looks like we have add shape, add some shapes. I'm gonna add a square for now. We can say this is the leader of the team. And then we can say, this is a manager and this is a dev. Okay. Maybe this is kind of cool how you can just click these to create new shapes. I didn't have to come up here, create a shape and connect it. it makes it really nice and easy. I don't use a lot of flowchart software, so I don't know if this is better or different or worse or whatever, but, uh, is pretty cool. This is a web app. So, um, Initially, when you think about web apps, you think about maybe non-native feeling, but this feels fantastic. Sort of like, I, I'm going to keep coming back to Figma because it's one of my favorite apps, but sort of how Figma feels 
very native and fantastic. This does too. It feels smooth. I want to click some of this stuff. Okay, this is the color. I would have thought the circle was a shape or something, but whatever. Uh, color. Here we go. I change this to purple. That's cool. Uh, let's change the dev to a shape. Um, devs are kind of like, oh, not like that. Not like that. Devs are kind of like, not like that either. I don't know what devs are. Devs are sort of the database shape. We'll pick the database shape and then we'll say it's red. Okay. So devs are database shaped. So this is pretty cool. So far, so good. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. Nice and smooth. Everything snaps to the grid. You get line snapping. Let's mean do over overlapping if I want to. I don't know how many people have used the application Max MSP, uh, but Max MSP was a programming language for video audio that had boxes that you connect via patch cables. And this feels very much the same way, the way these patch cables bend and move. I understand these are just arrows. Ooh, that is cool. You know what? We do something like this on level up tutorials in our courses to draw lines like this for SVG paths. And I want to know how they did theirs because I want to do ours more like this. Uh, very nice, very, very nice. Okay, so this is a flow chart. There's not a whole lot to see here other than this. I don't think I can add a bear. And the bear apparently acts as... <laughs> okay, the bear apparently acts as a flow chart thing. You can branch off and make other bear charts. This is pretty cool. This is a bear family tree. Uh, we have one bear that uh, Solo uh, gave birth to another bear who married another bear. There we go. This is pretty fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out some of the other features here. I'm going to head back here. I'm going to, instead of creating a new wireframe, I'm going to look at the Yelp one because this is pretty involved. Looks like. Okay, this is the wireframe. So, wireframes, what does it get you? Uh, it looks like this is all clickable. Click, click, I can click and move and move, whatever. So, fun. I'm wondering how much of this has to be created yourself and how much of it comes here. So let's, because it looks like everything is clickable and movable. But are these all just primitives creating, like, are these just a bunch of squares? Maybe. Um, it would be really difficult. I, I personally am probably going to reach for a more full feature tool to do prototyping, something like Figma. I personally use, this sounds like a Figma ad. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not being paid to mention Figma so much. I, ju I just use it every day. Um, we have our own design system and, and level up tutorials with Figma, and it makes it really easy to drop in components, sort of like what I assume you're doing here. Let's go ahead and click a window. Okay, cool. It's nice so far. Click an element. What do we have in here? Buttons, buttons, links, buttons, background, text, inputs. Select avatar. That one's fun. Okay. Let's select more. Let's select some fun ones. We're going to do horizontal tabs. Here's a tab. Oh, this is fun. We can click a plus and make new tabs like this. I think that's pretty fun. Although I don't know where they went. Oh, I need to give them a title. I need to give them a name. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is pretty cool. Uh, there are features in this that make this very nice. If you are a non-designer type, um, you're not concerned about fidelity in the design and you want to get some stuff on paper, this seems like good. I might I might personally reach for a pad of paper and a pencil instead of something like this. That's me personally. Um, this tool, it looks nice, but am I inclined to use this? Probably not. Why? I don't know. Uh, I just between either Figma being the same sort of feature set for this, and um, granted you have to create your own components, but the same sort of feature set for me, uh, I probably just wouldn't reach for this. But it looks very full featured. You can add a bunch of elements and you can create some really quick mockups. Um, seems like something anybody could do too. So it doesn't seem too difficult to figure out. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out Sticky Notes, which this is one and maybe the most skeptical about um, if, let's see, test. Okay, let's create some new sticky notes. Create a card and say, this is an idea, I guess. Duplicate, watch card, color card. 
large, small, idea, expand card. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I wasn't expecting this. We can say, uh, what's up with the the new design? And then I can comment and say, it stinks. P.U. Stinky. Okay. Nice little commenting system I can assign to various people. Apparently can be part of a stack. Okay. Okay. So this is cool. Apparently this is a stack. And maybe it's Kanban board, Kanban board like. I'm sorry, Japanese people. I just said Kanban. What am I thinking? Kanban board. Um, sorry, I'm just clicking around here. Can I drag this to this one? I can. So you could think of this as creating your own Trello board, your own Kaban board, or doing, I'm going to do this in Notion. I'm not going to do this in this, this app. It honestly feels like it's shoehorned in here. I respect that you could keep all of your stuff in one place and you would only have to pay for one service to do this. There are other tools that do this better. Um, it's good though. And the, the goodest thing about this is that it, it looks nice. Um, I think that's important. Yeah, you can create a stack of cards here. Okay, okay, I get it. I think it's interesting. I think it's a very interesting idea. I think it looks nice, it feels nice, it functions nice. I still probably wouldn't reach for this over other tools. Okay, last tool is the mind map. Now, I'm most excited for the mind map. Why? I think I'm most inclined to use this application for a mind map. I do a lot of brainstorming. Uh, let's think about this. I'm going to do a brainstorming on the new quizzes feature. Okay, quizzes. Let's go ahead, and it looks like these buttons still exist here for same thing. So I'll click one, see what it does. Okay, and within quizzes, let's say they are going to be community driven, as in uh, we're doing quizzes and people can submit them. And uh, another branch off, an idea off of community driven is pay per quiz. Okay, let's click this again. And I want to add another thing to this. If I click this one, that branches off of quizzes. So you always want to click this one to do a branch off of. Interesting. Okay, so it's community driven pay per quiz. And uh, what are some other things? We're going to have a quiz submit process. We're going to have an author role. Okay. Now, what else can quizzes be? Well, they can be, ooh, it automatically changed the color for me. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. I like it. Um, okay. So other quizzes are also going to be like, let's think of something. Uh, what else? They're going to be, what are the properties of the quiz themselves? If I hit enter, what does it do? It gives me a new one like that. Okay. So if I'm on this and I hit enter, it branches down from the previous one. If I hit tab, ooh, okay, it branches off. Look at this. Let me talk about intuitive keyboard shortcuts. I just guessed. I guessed uh, based on other applications I've used like this. Maybe not like this, this, but like, you know, other things. It worked. Hey, uh, shout out to Whimsical for intuitive keyboard shortcuts in a web app. Okay, so properties, they're going to be difficult. They're going to be um, educational. They're going to be short. I mean, maybe like 10 questions, multi-choice. Okay, and if you're wondering, all of these things that I'm saying right now are real. We're actually doing a quiz platform. I know I'm just like sort of pontificating on this quizzes thing. We're doing this, and this is me live brainstorming parts of the quizzes. Uh, they're not going to be out by the time this video is up, but we will have community-driven quizzes. We will pay you to submit quizzes uh, once they go live, and uh, we will offer feedback on your submitted quizzes to get them. So that's just a thought. Uh, it'll be on leveluptutorials.com. Not here yet, but I'm doing some brainstorming right now with Whimsical. Now, I first heard about Whimsical from a tweet from Notion saying that uh, at notion.so, it's a service I really love, not sponsored. Um, 
they said that you could embed a whimsical document and uh, into Notion. I know a lot of people have been asking for flowcharts and things like that within Notion itself. And instead, Notion was like, well, you can embed whimsical. And I was like, oh, whimsical, what's that? So I have an open Notion document here. Here it is. And I'm going to attempt to embed a whimsical document. So we'll just call this, well, we'll call this quizzes chart. We'll, we'll, we'll see if I can use this um, again in the future. And I saw in their tweet, we just do forward slash whimsical, enter it. Okay. Embed whimsical. Works with whimsical links with a public link access enabled. So I need to figure out how to get a public link. I'm going to look. The reason why I looked up here, if we're being entirely honest, I looked up in the upper right hand corner. Why? Because that's where it is in Figma. And I have a feeling like these folks were inspired by Figma. Just a minor feeling they they may not be, but it it was there. So uh, either I got lucky or I'm good. So let's go ahead and click get shareable link. because that's the first option. We can copy this. It said that they need public access. So I'm gonna turn public access on. I would assume that doesn't make this public public, but it makes it public with a link because that's how a lot of these services do it. I'm going to want to confirm that though. I'm pretty sure though. Let's go ahead and paste this in. Enter embed whimsical. See this in action. Oh, I got to click the button. Turns out I have to click the button and uh, here we are. Embedded whimsical. I can make this bigger or smaller. I can zoom in. Can I make it wider? I certainly can. Let's open this as a full page. Let's tell this to do full width and look at that. We have whimsical charts in Figma or in Notion, not Figma. I got Figma in the brain. What can I say? Um, you know, this is cool, but the kind of person that I am, I'm going to be kind of nuts about this and say, oh, I wish this background could be maybe blending in here. So it makes me curious. Are you able to change the background color here? We have gray, zoom out, zoom to content, zoom to content. Ooh, that's nice. But can we change the background color? Can we? We can't. Doesn't look like it. If you can change the background color in Whimsical, get at me. I'll leave a comment and update this video. Doesn't look like it. Those of us who like our, our uh, dark mode are going to be disappointed. Because I'm not seeing a dark mode. I'm not seeing an ability to change the visual aesthetic of this, but their actual aesthetic looks really nice. I'm going to uh, maybe take a, a gander at some of the CSS when I'm off video here. So this is Whimsical. Let me know what you think of this tool. Would you pay monthly for this tool? Where would you use it in your workflow? What do you think about Whimsical? I personally am going to expand upon this mind map here. I'm going to use up my four free boards. I'm going to use them quite extensively, and then I'm going to evaluate whether or not I need to pay monthly for something like this. Now, I had a, a great uh, message sent to me from Sean. You might know him as at Swix, uh, at S-W-Y-X, saying, well, maybe it'd be really cool to do a follow-up with some of the creators of some of these services. And I thought that's a really great idea. So if you are interested in me potentially talking to a representative from some of these companies after the fact, maybe do a little live stream or something, talk to them, interview them, ask them some questions about these services, and maybe expand upon some things that we learned within the tries series. Maybe it's like a Scott follows up situation. Let me know if you are interested in seeing that. I thought it was a really neat idea and something I might be interested in pursuing. So let me know what you think. Now, as always, this is the part of the video where I get a little silly and I try to talk about some stuff. If you need a podcast in your life, check out Syntax at Syntax.fm. We talk about all sorts of web stuff. Our latest episode was on serverless and cloud functions. It was really good. And if you want to learn a whole bunch of really cool stuff, head on over to leveluptutorials.com. If you sign up for a pro subscription, save 25% uh, if you are a pro for the year. Look at that. $18.75 a month when you pay annually. Uh, we come out with a brand new tutorial series every single month. Every month, new tutorial series. 
The latest one was how to build a GraphQL API, how to write a GraphQL API. Uh, sorry for this beat of the site right now. My CPU is going nuts. I'm recording 4K video and streaming. Um, so how to make a, a GraphQL API was the latest course. And the next course after that is going to be uh, the one you may have gotten a little bit of a sneak peek at animating React with frame or motion. It's sick. Uh, the course is going to be fantastic. So if you are interested in learning any of this stuff, we do all sorts of practical animations with frame or motion and a real web app situation. It's awesome. Uh, let me know what you think. As always, Scott, Level Up Tutorials, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one.